Hey guys, welcome to Champion Spring. I'm Doa, that's Monte Cristo, and that's Jim our Cam. gym camera. It gives you great shots of the crowd and sometimes blocks us <laughs> from the camera. That's how it pointed at us. Yeah. It happens. That's right. Nothing new to champions. We love Jib Cam. We do. Jib Cam, he shows up every once in a while, <laughs> reminds us that we're there. It's okay, though. We like Jib Cam. We'll go grab a drink with him later, you know. <laughs> After There's the broadcast, hang out. That's right. There's some people in the crowd, but that's not from Jib Cam. That's from a regular camera on a tripod, guys. Oh, big, wow. big difference. He's got nothing on Jib Cam as far as I'm. There's Jib Cam, yeah. Great <laughs> shot, Jib Cam. Now get out of the way. <laughs> well, SK Telecom versus EM Fire will be our first match today, guys. And then Longju taking on the Afrika Freaks. Now, SK Telecom versus EM Fire, obviously something that we would call a pretty one-sided match. And SK Telecom is trying to maybe even it up a little bit. They're starting blank today instead of Bengi. But they are starting Faker. So no they scout. Are. We yeah. will see Faker at least in the first game of this series, depending right. on how things go. And blank. Uh, apparently, you know, just talking around, having some chats with people. He's obviously doing very well in solo queue, apparently does very well in scrims. Uh, but I don't know what's going on. May have some nerve issues because he's really been a non-factor for SKT yeah. when he's actually been playing here in the studio. At the same time, I mean, people feel that Bengi is slumping a little bit this season too. So yeah. SK Telecom is in kind of a difficult spot because... Yeah, in, in the big matches, you want to start Bengi. He's a veteran jungler. He's got the experience. But he hasn't been playing quite as well as they've uh, seen him play in the past. And so, you know, why not give Blank a shot early in the season? I'm still a little bit upset that they put Blank in for that third game versus Rocks Tigers, man. But That was a little weird. But I don't yeah. – I'm not surprised they put him in today. In fact, I'm surprised Scout isn't starting today and Faker yeah, today isn't today makes more sense. And yeah. as far as Blank goes versus Bengi, I mean, we're just in a meta right now. Yes, we have Kindred disabled this week. But our Nidalee, our Kindred, our Graves, are these Bengi champions? The answer is no. No, they are not Bengi champions. And so in this meta, if Bengi isn't performing that well, if that's how they feel, and coupled with the fact that he's not really a carry jungler, then yeah. maybe they think that Blank is a better solution right now. Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. Here's our ranking so far in the season. Again, the Rocks Tigers on top with four wins, zero losses. Kind of reminiscent of uh, spring season last year. We'll see how long they can keep that up with teams like KT Rolster and Samsung moving up as well. Janair Greenwings 4-1, kind of surprising to see that. Yeah, but Rox has also knocked most of the major opponents out of the way, so right. we can assume that uh, they'll have a pretty easy road for the rest of the round robin. Yeah, I would say so. And like we mentioned earlier, our first matchup of the day, SK Telecom, the current reigning world champions taking on EM Fire, a team that until earlier this week was winless in Champions. They finally got their first match win. And then Longju Gaming versus Afrika Freaks. Longju, you know, kind of like the IM from last year, came into Champions with a lot of hype around their team. A lot of uh, interesting names, but just have not produced results yet. I'm still holding, holding out hope that once the players on Longju kind of get it together, this team is going to be good, you know, but it remains to be seen if that's going to be happening. That's right. It's going to take some time at the very least. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's introduce our, let's introduce our teams for the first match. It's, of course, the one, the only SK Telecom T1. And they will be starting blank again today. Their alternate jungler, a uh, new player. I like Wolf's thoughtful pose in the back <laughs> right there. That's my favorite. Hey, well, we know the support players are the most intelligent <laughs> players on the team, so that makes sense to me. I, I can understand. I that. believe you mean the jugglers, but that's okay. Uh, well, you're wrong, but I'll <laughs> let it go over this time around. Blank will prove in this game that the jugglers are not the most intelligent. We can at least agree uh, that AD carries are the least intelligent. Yeah, right? I, I definitely right, agree good. with that. Right, that's cool. obvious, man. <laughs> that, sh that just goes without saying, right? <laughs> Baker in the mid lane again. A little bit surprising that they're starting this guy with uh, with Scout as the alternative uh, mid laner. But you know, I suppose maybe they they're like, well, we want to we want to give people experience, but we don't want to lose. You know, they don't want to embarrass them, themselves too much. I suppose. Yeah, the first couple games, if you guys missed that, between SKT and the Tigers are definitely worth revisiting. Very good games Those of League of great. Legends. Yeah, game three, not as much, but. Let's all move on. I'll try to move on for that. I'm trying to move on, guys. It's EM Fire. There they are, of course, the team that was uh, raised from the ashes and rubble of the Najin organization with a, a completely new set of players. Some familiar faces, obviously. We've seen Edge before on uh, KT back in the day. Yeah, they were raised from the ashes like a really pathetic phoenix. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a charcoal carving. Or, I don't know. 
But that said, they did take up their first win last week over Spenu. Uh, we've seen them be most successful when they play some mages in the mid lane, Lissandra and Victor, coupled with Gnar from Hippo in the top side. Now, Hippo has a very weird champion pool, and we keep seeing that top Nautilus, which just doesn't really work. Yeah. So I think Hippo needs to, uh, we'll have to see more from him, more diversity in his selections, because beyond some tanks, he hasn't had much going for him. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, looking a little bit more into the details of our match between SK Telecom and EM Fire, obviously uh, fifth versus seventh right now, and you'd have to expect X SKT to keep moving up. But it's been a it's been a bizarre season so far. That loss against Jin Air was just weird. Then against Rocks Tigers, it seemed like they didn't they just didn't want to play straight up for three games. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. EM Fire's had a rough season, though. Starting off against Samsung and Jin Air, then taking the win over Spenu in a yeah. pretty sloppy series. But, I mean, three out of their first four games are against pretty big contenders here in Champions. So we'll have to see how EM Fire does once they start playing teams more around their level in the table. Yep, and there are the KDAs for both teams. Obviously, we're seeing uh, Bengi there instead of Blank. Blank would be much, much lower, down at 0 .2 KDA right now. Which that is, is not kinda, good. It's kind of low, and it's kind of indicative, too, of uh, how he's been doing. There he is on your screen right now, and again, you know, he's the new guy. He's a new kid on the block. He's been trying to make a name for himself, but it, it really hasn't worked out quite yet. Um, I wouldn't count him out, though, because SK Telecom has had a history of picking up players and really turning them into very, very good players at their positions. So let's give it some time. Yeah, it does take quite a long time to engineer that feed. And yeah. one thing that SKT actually hasn't been able to do really is take junglers and turn them into top tier at their position. And interestingly enough, we saw Tom, uh, Horo. Uh, they've only really had Bengi that's worked out as a jungler for them otherwise. But we've seen, of course, Great AD carries come out, great mid laners, great top laners. So great that, supports. Yeah, great supports. Yep. So it's just the junglers that they've been having trouble with. And of course, the jungle position uh, definitely changes a lot when you're on the pro team. It's very different than from solo queue. Yeah. Probably that and top lane are the most different. Well, it's interesting too, because it seems like it's such a jungler's paradise these days with a lot less vision in the early game. Uh, but we just see a lot of lane swaps. We don't see as much straight up ganking as I thought we would. But who knows? Maybe it'll change in time. It probably won't. Let's go into picks and bans for game number one between SK Telecom and EM Fire. Gangplank is going to be the first ban here. Uh, yeah, SK Telecom. They've been preferring to run these big scaling compositions. Tom Kench top with a or blue Ezreal or mid Gangplank. Yeah. Uh, over the course of this season, and that's actually led to a very interesting statistic, which is that they're actually eighth in gold differential at 15 minutes at negative 672. Now, it's by the fact that they have won most of their games, but this just shows that they've been trying to play for these big late game hyper carries, and they've been building compositions that basically protect Bang or protect two AD carries, uh, depending on the position, whether it's Corky um, with an AD carry, like Lucian in the bottom lane, uh, or you know, Corky Mid and Lucian, or uh, Kindred, and whatever Bang's going to be playing. So, it's it's been interesting to see how they've how they've decided they're going to operate in this meta. I'm not convinced that it is ideal, especially when we watch teams like KT and the Tigers, who look a little bit more on the ball. Yeah, we'll see. Even Janair. True. A lot of season left to figure all that out. Corky will be the third ban for SK Telecom. And what will be the last ban from EM Fire? There's a lot of good picks open, obviously. Lissandra's still available. Uh, it's going to be the Poppy ban. Well, Poppy has certainly been a powerful pick around the world. And that means it's going to be an Alistar pickup first for SKT. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if EM Fire is actually going to take the Lissandra. They have run it in the mid lane for Edge previously. Faker, a very good Lissandra player in his own right. Crush taking a look at that Nidalee combined with the Tom Kedge for a bit of front line and protection there. Yeah. They may we'll just want to take the Tom Kench away, but with the Callista still available, I would be kind of leaning in that direction because giving Bang Callista is never a good idea. <laughs> That's very true. Wouldn't be surprised to see them grab it right away. And Elise Callista. Yep. Looks like that's what it's going to be, and uh, that should
would not be surprising at all. Blank on Elise is a very powerful pick, too. That leaves Crush for that Nidalee. So it's going to be interesting to see what EM Fire can get going. I mean, with the Nidalee, do you expect some sort of siege comp? Yeah, we could see that, um, but they have to be interested probably in taking something like a Lucian here or an Ezreal. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to try scaling against SKT. That may not be the best strategy when it comes to beating them, considering that's how they have preferred to play the game, and they are no slouch in the late game. True. Well, with Corky banned out as well, that kind of takes away some of your sieging options, unless you're going to go like Jace or something in the mid lane. Yeah, Bang is 16-1 uh, and all-time on Kalista. It's pretty good. You know, not too shabby, a 94% win rate on that pick. When was his first Kalista loss? Was that at Worlds? Uh, yes. That's what I thought. Was. Yeah. Trundle Ezreal. All right. So they are going to take the Ezreal in combination with the Nidalee. So, like you said, Doe, they are going to be setting up a poke comp, but Trundle and Tom Getcher both flex picks, so we don't know exactly what their top laner is going to be yet, so SKT yeah. is going to have to pick with both of those champions in mind, and Duke could just take a Fiora falling very far down the draft, and... Well, this would be a lot of damage. He's not going to blind pick this Zed, <laughs> unfortunately. Bang just playing around right now. Well, the LeBlanc is a little bit, a little bit safer. Well, Lissandra's still available, definitely uh, Yeah. pick on the safer side. He's just kind of scrolling through. He's like, well, I play like a billion different champions, so what should I pick today? I don't know if I like the Cassiopeia a lot. Yeah. We've heard some rumors about Syndrome, the T uh, Syndra, rather, the TF is something that we've seen a lot of lately, and that's what it's going to be. Twisted Fate and Fiora, the final two picks for SK Telecom. I mean, the TF works very nicely in conjunction with the Elise, so they have a team composition here that can really dive the bottom side very effectively. But it does mean that he's confident that he's not going to get an assassin picked into him or have trouble with Edge. Edge has never really been an assassin player. And they could take the Lux here and go for a big time siege and disengage composition. They have the Trundle Pillar available. I think I like the Lux a little bit better than the Zerith. It's all said and done. Yeah, I think they're going to take Lux here. It does make the most sense of their composition. They have a lot of zone control. They have a lot of ways to save with the Tom Kench. I personally don't like Nidalee. I think it's overkill in a lot of these poke compositions. I don't think you yeah. need it. And I think it's more helpful to have an extra uh, jungler that is available for peel with like a Varus Corky or a Varus Ezreal or a Lux Ezreal, whatever you're going to pick composition. They're going to go for the Nidalee. And they are going to lock in the Lux, so it should be pretty safe farming in the mid lane for both players. And Cleanse will be taken by Edge. This, this Very is... smart versus Cocoon Gold card. This just seems, though, like the opposite of what you want to do against SK Telecom if you're one of the newer teams in the league. Uh, we already know that SK Telecom has a fairly weak early game right now. So if you want to play a comp that uh, you know goes a little bit longer, I, I don't think that's a good idea because you're kind of playing it right into when SKT comes alive, aren't you? Yeah, I think that might be an issue for them, definitely, Bill. But if they can set up a siege, that'll be... Uh, you know, that could work for them. But they do have Wolf, Faker, and Duke to create flanks here. And that's going to be hard to do against a team as good as SK Telecom. Now, Faker is 6-2 and two all time on Twisted Fate. You may say, okay, well, it's a 75% win rate. That's pretty good. It is good, Tilla. But actually, Twisted Fate is, I think, one of my least favorite champions to watch Faker play. He's actually not a very good Twisted Fate player, honestly, especially if you compare him to some of the kind of long-term TF gods that have existed in Korea, like Dade or Pawn or Fly, uh, these guys, or Mickey. These guys are all much better TF players than Faker is. We haven't seen him play it in a while, but I'm curious to see if he's improved on that pick. I think all we need to do to make Faker one of those TF players is just to tell him that, though. <laughs> like if, if, we, if we tell Faker, hey, you're, you're really not one of the best TF players, he's going to be like, what? And his eyes turn red, and his like, muscles get like three times bigger, and he suddenly becomes that TF player. Oh, I, will, I hope he has already. I hope I don't need to tell him that. Well, we're going to find out. SK Telecom versus EM Fire game number one. Let's get in the game. All right. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom versus EM Fire, who does not get a cheer today, apparently. <laughs> Poor EM Fire. 
Watch is gone, Najin is gone, therefore it's true. they have no fans anymore. So it's time for some more fun Faker facts. So. Okay, let's, let's hear it. So Faker, as a player, only has a below 50% win rate on two champions that he has played more than once. Wow. Can you guess what they are? Uh, I'm going to guess one of them. I think you can get one of them. Uh, it was a pick that was very popular at the beginning of last year that he was never very good at. Zara? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, I got that one. I remember <laughs> that. You won't get the other one. It's Ziggs. Ziggs. I actually I was gonna guess that. No joke. Oh really? I was actually gonna wow. say that. I'm not I'm not <laughs> Great just memory. That. Yeah, well I can I can at least remember what Faker's bad at. Yeah, and it's a lot his, less to remember, really. His Ziggs record is one and two, so all he has to do is play one more game with Ziggs and win with it, and then he'll be—it'll only be Zareth. Zareth, he is two and six, you know, or two I've, and five. So, but he was really not a very good Zareth player. No, they, and they kept picking it into really, really bad. Oh, they would blind too. pick it all yeah. the time. It was awful. No, that that definitely stands out in my mind as one of the some of the worst pick ban that we've <laughs> seen in Champions. Yeah, it was pretty dark for SK Telecom in terms of their draft at the beginning yeah. of last year. And then they went. Then they went to one worlds. Yep. Well, that's that's what SKD <laughs> does, you know. <laughs> Pretty much. So we'll see how Faker does. He landed that gold card. That's a tough skill to yeah. Get with. Mean, that's a targeted stuns. That's like, a hard one. The man. hardest. Good job. He learned that by playing Rise. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So we do have uh, lane swap here and blank. It's going to be found out by Gugger. Duke actually has to retreat uh -oh. into the jungle. Gugger's taking a lot of damage. This okay puts down the pillar, but man, I didn't see if he actually got one of those small right. camps or not. Well, he would have one CS if he did, and he does. So I think he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. So just being annoying. Yes, he is. He has to be careful though. Has already hit level two, so he is up on Duke. This early point in the game, and we're going to get an option on that Duke. Going to hit level two off the wolf camp, and now Hippo wandering to lick a tower in the top side. You really shouldn't lick the tower. Good thing the winter map isn't here anymore, Doa, because then he would st get stuck <laughs> to the tower. That's true. <laughs> Has it, have you ever done that? Have yes. you ever gotten your tongue stuck? To, I, I've never had that happen to me personally, but I've had friends that I've seen in person have that happen. You would just never admit to it, Doa. I no. What happened to me? I opened a car door when it was like really cold once. My hand stuck to the car door. That was not fun. What happened to your hand? How'd well, you get it off? I pulled really hard. Ouch. And lost some skin. Yeah. That was not fun. All right, Crush here. Uh oh. Waiting in the wings, Faker. Yeah, I'm trying to gank Faker here. Lands the spear. Faker taking a lot of damage. Doesn't need, though, to use any of his summoners. Yeah, really good knowledge there from Faker. Just takes the spear right to the face. Doesn't try and avoid it. Yeah. And is not able to be killed. Faker has opted for Ghost this game instead of Teleport. I think if he would have tried to dodge that spear, any sort of backtracking would have put him in a position where he could have been hit by light binding a little bit easier, and that would have resulted in a lot more damage in the long run. So I think you are right, Mr. Doa. Good, uh, good choices by Faker. Something we see quite a bit of. Yeah, you know, just the best player ever yeah. to play this game. Pretty much. Okay, so you see Fiora a little bit later on the turret kill, and that's going to result in Sol and Guga getting here very early, and Blank doing a little bit of counter jungling. They are going to back out now, and there goes the tower. Fiora getting a little bit of a freeze, but this is actually very ad advantageous for Hippo because he's going to get a lot more time to farm up in this top side, but he's playing a catch-up game when it comes to CS. Yeah. So Duke playing the Fiora. Of course, he's one of... Baron's best champions at the World Championship. Yep, very true. And it's a, a champion, I think, that fits very well into Duke's play style. So he should do just fine on it. But uh, against this duo lane, it's a little, a little bit tougher. I just like that we're seeing something different from SKT this game. They're opting for more split pushing in this one. This looks like something you would see KT run, as opposed to SKT, who has just been really trying to help Bang carry or allow Bang to carry so far in this season, just really prioritizing the Tom Kench and the mid GP, which they haven't looked too terribly strong with. And now they're just trying something different, playing with some more globals, trying to create some more map pressure. Pretty much. Take it pretty even on CS in the mid lane slightly. Here comes Cougar. He's just showing up. To shout and put some ice on the ground. That's right. Go! You want some ice? 
No, I don't want any ice. It's very cold in Seoul right now. Uh, well, still though, if you're drinking a frosty beverage inside, a little bit of ice is bad. Yeah, but they're outside, presumably. Well, yeah. I assume someone has ripped it's outside. It's, clearly, it's not very cold. Well, it could be all inside. It could be like the Hunger Games, where it's kind of like, <laughs> well, no, was the Hunger Games inside or outside? I don't know. I only saw the first one. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but what else is new? I'm like, they don't seem very hungry. They're, hungry. they're all in really good shape. I don't know. Yeah, they, they don't seem hungry. No. It doesn't even really look like they're playing a game. They're just like running around in some woods. Doesn't look like a game I don't want to play. A lot of people keep dying. <laughs> this does not look like a fun game. That Santa Claus guy should think of some new games. No, Hunger, Ga Hunger Games is really just the worst version of Battle Royale. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Just straight up true, right? But <laughs> you can't even argue with it. <laughs> but did Battle Royale have that many sequels? No, it didn't have any sequels. Yeah, thank God. But nobody knows that. Some people know that. Well, Duke still farming, and Hippo's gotten a chance to catch up now. Yeah, I mean, Cougar's, a bit of help from Cougar. Cougar's been helping in this top side. And both of these top laners really just having an easy time free farming, but they they want to prevent the dive early onto Hippo. So have Cougar up there. And this Ezreal, too, uh, we've seen a lot of teams do this where they put the blue Ezreal, particularly the Tigers, the Rocks Tigers really like to do this, is to put the blue Ezreal in a lane swap in the solo lane just so he can start getting level advantages. Um, and then sw switch Gorilla, or in this case, Gugger, up into the top side to be with the top laner instead. So they're really prioritizing the scaling on Ezreal's abilities. Right. And they're playing for the late game. They're saying, okay, we're not going to accelerate this with some really fast turret trades. We're going to slow the pace of this game down. We're not going to create these massive uh, back and forth freezes that you get with two long lanes in the side and instead just play a very controlled, uh, farming game where we can get this Ezreal where we need him to be. You know, we have seen a little bit more lately of the uh, lane swapping that doesn't result in the top turrets on both sides, or the top and bottom turrets on both sides going down really fast. Yeah, and many of those games are Ezreal games, you will, you will notice. Right. So Crush here comes in to grab his red buff and then pounce away right before uh, Wolf and Blank collapse on him, and here's the play we might see. Hippo is trying to recall right now. Bank's gonna have to stop him, and there he goes. He's gonna he stop him, and Hippo is not in a good position. Yeah, it's diving time. He flashes right away. Wolf comes oh. in with the headbutt. Doesn't land that pulverize, though, and yeah, that, that was, was a, bit a awkward. That was a big mechanical Ugh. misplay. Wolf and yeah. Blank. So Wolf missed his pulverize, and Blank missed his cocoon, and as a result, Ouch. there's no gank right there, and no follow-up possible here from Faker. That's a lucky hippo. Lucky, lucky hippo. Different than a hungry, hungry hippo. You know, they, they should really combine the two and have the hungry, hungry hippo games. <laughs> it already is a game, That's though. Not, I know, but... If you can't push like the a, little button fast enough, you die. Ten hippos, like in a game preserve, but they've got like access to a bunch of weapons and things, and the last hippo standing wins. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> hungry, hungry hippo games. There we go. That would have been a lot more fun. It's definitely a lot more fun than the hungry, hungry hippo, the actual game. Well, that was fun. I, I enjoyed it back in the day. Back, back in what day? <laughs> well, like the early days, like preschool days. <laughs> terrible well, I game. I remember enjoying it. You have to teach your kids strategy early, Doa. I was playing Otherwise hungry, they hungry hippo, and Monty was... Otherwise Sitting they there with like diodes strapped to his head playing chess against a supercomputer apparently. Well, otherwise uh, guy. otherwise your kids end up to be 80 carries, you know. That's what <laughs> happens to Hey, I ended up being a support. It's not always the truth. We played other games. Oh, Gugger helps his EM Fire teammates skate to safety because I only assume that's why you go faster on ice. You just start sliding. You know? I guess. Just strap on the ice skates. Or just slide. You don't need ice skates to slide on ice. That, that's very true. I've yeah. learned that because in Seoul, no one ever bothers to salt the sidewalks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gold card on the Hippo. A little bit of damage coming in. He has no flash right now. Grand challenge issued by Duke. Turret's not up right now, so I think this is going to be a dead Tom Kench. No escape. 
this time. He's going to eat Duke, but Faker's just going to pop him right out of that Tom catch. There we go. <laughs> First blood going over to Faker. He frees Duke from Catfish right. Prison. <laughs> I'll save you. <laughs> well, uh, not much to say about that. That was one very all. overextended hippo in the top lane, and they had no control over mid, so yeah. with the use of the two teleports, one from Faker's ultimate and one from Duke. It was an extremely easy first blood. He was an overly hungry hippo. You know, it's getting greedy for that farm, and now Duke will start getting a big advantage. And uh, with everyone falling back from EM fire, they're going to not only lose their top laner, but give up a free dragon as well. Yep. Oh, SKT, they're trying to get the dragon, but here comes Soul. Oh, they hit Red it right. Away. Oh, nope. my. Oh, wow, they gave the dragon over to EM fire. Oh, bang. Whoa, Crush going in. They really want to make something out of this. I don't know if they can, though. Wolf's still in trouble. Goes ahead and headbutts Googer away. Slowed down, though. Pulled in by the Fates call. You can't catch a support like that. Faker, meanwhile, nearly taking out Edge. SK Telecom pretty lucky that they didn't lose anyone there. Wow, they lost that Dragon, though. And we were just talking about Bang's record on Callista and saying, wow, he's 16-1. and one. He's definitely one of, if not the best Callista player in the world. And I mean, making a mistake like that, he should know how much his Ren damage is at yeah. any given level. And so to make the error there and leave it, it wasn't just like 10 HP either. It was 230 HP when he rended. And that was just a freebie for EM Fire. I mean, I think he just kind of got stressed. He was like, well, we, we just have to go for it now, but it didn't work out. SKT still with a decent little lead early on. But giving your opponent the first dragon probably isn't a good way to keep it. Uh, that's okay. They still have Duke here, who is getting absolutely terrifying in the top side as he starts to really take a huge lead in terms of CS. And that's going to be enough to win them this game in the end. We all know what happens with Yor in the late game. And with this kind of early advantage, Duke is probably just going to take over this game at this point. Yep. Yeah, he's got a big lead over Hippo right now. And Hippo really having a hard time farming, doing wraiths right now. Or I'm sorry, raptors right now. They're not wraiths anymore. It's been a little while. They changed from ghosts to birds, Doa. That's right. Ghosts to birds. A natural transition. Yeah, usually it's dinosaurs to birds is the evolution, <laughs> but... Or any living thing to a ghost. <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> but ghost to birds, I don't know, Ryan. I don't, I don't know how you can justify that in the lore. Riot clearly has very interesting ideas about evolution <laughs> on Summer's Rift. It's sort of like the uh, the Final Fantasy Spirits Within version of things where, you know, maybe there was like a meteor with like ghost aliens that crashed on here. I don't even remember Wait. the plot of that movie. I've seen it, That's but I don't remember the it. plot. They were fighting these monsters and then later on they figured out they were like the ghosts of aliens that were on this asteroid that crashed into Earth or whatever. So it was like Scientology. It's basically Scientology. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It's true. No Xenu, though. Xenu, optional. They didn't crash in a volcano either. That's still pretty close, though. I suppose. Whoa. Faker has to flash all that light binding. I don't know. That that may have just barely missed him. But it was, uh, it would, it was really it close. It was really close. And the follow-up there, too. Yeah. Uh, he would have instantly died from the burst from Italy. Yeah, you can't criticize that flash. Definitely. So better just to go ahead and use that. Run, Raptor. Oh, Faker TPing in. They're going to try to go after Hippo. Hippo flashing over the wall. Faker, will he chase? He's trying. He's got Ghost, but he's not using it to pursue. Meanwhile, some action down in mid lane as Gugger prevents Wolf from getting as quickly there as he wants to. Top Catch oh. ulted into the mid lane out we of that, did. and they had no follow-up there. Duke wow. and Faker really not coordinating very well, and now this Siege comp from EM Fire really is going to get rolling. Yeah, this, whoa, Blank taking a big amount of damage oh. from the combo and the spear. If that would have hit, that would have oh. been a kill. <laughs> Operation Kill Blank has failed. Uh, EM Fire, though, with the next minion wave, may be able to do some damage to this turret. Man, that was close. Yeah, and that's the power. The best Lux games that we've seen have been the ones where there's a follow-up burst because she's yeah. usually not enough to kill somebody even with a full combo, 100 to zero them. So having that Nidalee and the Ezreal there to be the finisher and to provide the extra damage really is quite helpful. And EM Fire nearly picks up a kill there. They don't even get the mid turret though. 
in the end. And that means Faker's now back with his wave clearing TF in the mid lane after a really failed gank in the top side. They didn't coordinate that very well, especially with Faker's flash being down. I think that really let that one go as Hippo had to flash over the wall, but they'll have another shot at it. Oh, teleport coming in for Empire to try to protect Guger and Sol. Hippo is there. Wolf. Slowed down a little bit, but Blank and Duke are coming up. There's Bang, just in case he needs to pull him to safety. Which he can't right now, I guess. That's on cooldown, but it doesn't matter. He's fine either way. Duke teleported first, and that's, that's another time where Duke just... He made the first teleport work, but every other sort of global gank since then has not been so clean, and... Yeah. Uh, it's... Last season, in summer season, the one series that SK Telecom lost. They played 18 best of threes and they lost one to CJ Entis. And in that series, Faker played TF when they lost and they were playing with a lot of globals. And I don't know what it is about SK Telecom's shot calling, but when they try and play with TF and like several globals, sometimes they look really uncoordinated. And yeah. that was with Marin too. Well, you add into that that they're using Blank and Duke this time and Duke never known as being like the greatest TP player ever to say the least, so. It's a, it's a challenge. I mean, SK Telecom really seems to be pushing themselves here, here, but this should be an easy gank on the hippo. Yeah. Easy kill there. More kills for Faker. Just I mean, comes into the top side, and occasionally Hippo just decides that he wants to give SK Telecom a, a kill. So I mean, he has no wards. I don't know why he's doing he that. He has literally <laughs> zero wards on the top side of the map. Yeah. Fire has one ward in the river, and that is it. So he can't be walking out that far against a Fiora and a Twisted Fate. Yeah, there, there is absolutely no other result that can come out of Hippo being up that <laughs> so far, true. aside from being killed. That's and literally that's, the only thing that can possibly happen. That's the third time they've tried to kill him, and they've been successful twice yeah. on those gangs. So fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me at this point. And Hippo just needs to stop walking into that lane while Faker, if they can't see Faker, it's pretty easy. Hippo, here's a, here's a little uh, flow chart for you. <laughs> Can I see Faker? Yes, no. Uh -huh. No? Don't walk into top lane by yourself. There you go. Good idea. That is an easy flow chart. You're right. <laughs> SK Telecom going for their dragon. We'll see if they can claim this one. Doesn't look like the Empire can stop it, though. Nope. That's about it. And can Wolf zone long enough for them to get this blue buff? Actually going in with the headbutt pulverize on the Empire. They catch Guger with that cocoon. Whoa, Wolf taking a lot of damage. Blank does take the blue buff, but now they're chasing. Spooky Ghost slows down Wolf, and he may be in trouble. He ulted. Nope, pulled in with the Fates Call. <laughs> Every time I think he's about to <laughs> die, just Fates Call away. Callista is actually the bane of play-by-play -play casters. Yep. You know that, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> The ultimate tease. So you try and make it sound like it's a really tense moment, but it's an Alistair with ult up and a Callista yeah. with ult up. That Alistair is not dying. The, the banes of play-by-play -play casters are uh, Callista, alt, and Chinese player names. <laughs> it's basically both of it. Some European player names. <laughs> well, you don't like MLXG? No. <laughs> That's it's easier than some. Figure actually complete his recall right there of the E from Lux coming in. Good for him. The Empire trying to put some more pressure on this mid lane turret, and they should be able to get it this time. Yeah, they do. All right. So a turret lead goes to EM Fire. Well, as it should be with this siege composition that they have chosen to play here against SK Telecom, they're finally getting some opportunities to group. Whoa, that was... <laughs> Blank, do you get the impression that Lux is on the other side of that wall? I think he understands now. Okay, yeah. I mean, didn't look like he got it at first, but now he gets it. To SKT's credit, they have done a good job of dealing with EM Fire by focusing down this top catch because it's been preventing EM Fire from actually grouping and taking down that mid turret for a very long time here. They finally get it. Hippo has decided that since he can't see Faker and he doesn't have any wards at the top side, that he would like to not be in next to the river. I think that's a good call, though. I, I like what sense. Hippo's doing right now. Do you? Do you like that he's not just randomly wandering up and dying? I, I do. I, I do really like that. It's a positive change for Hippo. I was going to say, if that keeps going much longer, we talk about the suffering of the Hippo. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's He's uh, definitely an early front runner for this season's Long Panda Memorial Trophy. That's true. And getting the Long Panda Memorial Trophy is not 
the end of your career at all because uh, Smeb was given that <laughs> he a, was. a few years ago. So <laughs> if you can go from a Long Panda Memorial Trophy Award winner to uh, World's runner-up, that's that's then, pretty good. There's hope for everyone, is what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> Hippo could go to Worlds in like except a year for Long Panda. Knows. There's no hope. For well, Long that's Panda. right. That's, <laughs> There's perpetually no hope for Long Panda. Oh well. And of course, Ryu is still dying to this day. <laughs> well, uh, no, we don't know where he is because uh, he's not going to be playing in the LCS this week. Guess so. Where is Ryu? Where in the world is Ryu? <laughs> I was going to say, are you, are you going for a Where's Waldo or a, where, a Carbon San Diego reference <laughs> there, Noah? A little bit of both. Where's Waldo San Diego would be really annoying game to play. Well, yeah, because you'd have like a picture of the Earth, basically. And you'd have to. Well, uh -oh. there's only six billion people here. Baker taking a lot of damage as he comes in. Wolf is there though, and Bang. Oh, nearly grabs that kill on the soul. Gugger coming in. Baker exhausted. Takes a ton of damage from the two shot barrage. Hippo having to turn around in the last minute. Somehow Faker survived that. But here comes the rest of EM fire. They're gonna keep chasing though. Flash from Bang. They're gonna try to get all the summoners out, I guess. Yeah, they're gonna have to turn around. Wolf, oh, there is flashes. no Fates call this time. Flash from Wolf, yep, Spear comes through, Wolf dodges it. And in the end, nobody going down. Yeah, Hippo actually TP'd back to the mid lane turret because that's where Duke was putting the pressure on. Duke looks like he canceled his TP and decided just to push the mid lane instead, but they don't actually get an objective from it. Yep. Wow, that was something. So yeah, they, they try to make a play onto that tier two, overextend, they're not really punished for it. And EM Fire sent on the defensive again, but they're not setting up a very potent split push just yet. Duke doesn't have TP, but he can still get into a side lane and start pushing. They finally have Faker by himself in that top side. And Faker with no summoners right now, so he is a little bit more vulnerable. He's gonna have his ult back up soon. Yeah, but they have to split up EM Fire right now. They can't just right. keep letting him group his five. SKT, if they're going to win this game, they have to continue to push these waves forward, get vision. Uh-oh. Whoa, Wolf taking some hits. Has no ult right now. Turns around, maybe they can finish him off. Wow, they just will. That Cougar actually. I guess so. Popping his ultimate right there and yeah. finishing him off. A little bit of damage over time, and Alistair just a few seconds away from having that unbreakable will, but not soon enough. Yep. Baker's coming Worked in. Out. He's trying, looking for an angle here. Not really finding it. Yeah, they haven't had the best coordination, and you think that Blank and Baker would be actually trying to gank the same places here just because they do have that cocoon gold card combo yeah. to lock people down, but they just haven't been really on the same page. Blankenfaker sounds like the name of some sort of like doctor in the Marvel Universe that's working on a serum to create super soldiers or something. <laughs> Blankenfaker. Blankenfaker. <laughs> Dr. Blankenfaker. It's actually a great name. Yep. I was thinking of more like a 70s cop drama. That too. Blankenfaker. He's a cop. No, Blank and Faker. Oh, Blank and Faker. They're cops. <laughs> they have fire going for their second dragon. And it looks like they're going to get it too. SK Telecom using the opportunity to try to push this mid lane, but I don't think it's going to be too successful. This has been a just a really awkward game for SKT. I mean, they've. It's been awkward looked, for, for everybody. For me and you too. This is, this is like the junior high school of games, Noah. Yeah, kind of. It is. You know, you're trying to like play and win the game, but really you're just sort of thinking about testing that new Magic the Gathering deck when you get home, you know? Trying to impress that girl. That's right. That sounds more like junior high to me. <laughs> <laughs> trying to impress that girl with your new Magic the Gathering deck. <laughs> I can totally see you doing that, Della. <laughs> Dude, my red deck wins in four turns. Damn. It's so fast. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. That never happened. I was a Star Wars CCG player. <laughs> he never talked to a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, what? No. <laughs> you pick which part of that story didn't happen. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, the girls just weren't cool enough, man. That's just how it was. <laughs> so what, Minnesota girls not good enough for you now? 
No, dude, I moved to Korea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I really just, the more, see, the thing is, Monty knows, the more he gets me to say, the, like, more of a hole I'll dig myself into. <laughs> just a matter of bait. I'm aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't help it. I know, it's wonderful. <laughs> uh -oh. Duke's on the run. He's going to dodge that spear. Throws out the trap, but Crush is moving around it. Nice trophy going down for Gugger. Duke pops the ultimate, but runs away. He's turning it around now. The rest of SKT trying to get there, but they're not actually going to come. Well, what were you doing in junior high, Monty? Not much. Yeah? Not much. Uh-huh. Wow. That was really boring. Yeah, it was a boring time of my life. boring answer. Huh. Well, at least I was playing Magic together. <laughs> I actually was too. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we so were nerds together. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wolf has to pop that ultimate. Gets very, very low. Turns around. Gets a knock up on the crush. Fate's call pulls him to safety. Again, I just need a button that says Fate's call pulls oh. him to safety, and I can just hit that. <laughs> the Doa soundboard. That's right. For a game like this, you could save the voice a little bit, you know? The old face checking of Duke. It's so safe, and that's why one of the reasons that Callista Alistair is considered uh, maybe the best lane in the game right now. Maybe. Is because with the limited vision that you have in this season, having a free face check is awfully nice. And oh, it's a great engagement tool, and you could tower dive with it. Yep. Pretty catch all at this point in time. This is one of those games where I just look at it and I'm like, I don't really think this game is ever going to end. I don't really this see. This is your how, purgatory. Della. I don't see how this game could ever actually finish with the way these teams are playing. <laughs> you have to, you have to cast, you know, an entire season of these games before you get into game heaven. I guess so. I feel like I've already done a couple of these. <laughs> you know, here's the scary thing, though. Oh, Faker gets caught. That's kind of scary. It takes a big hit from that final spark, but it's just not quite enough. Crush looking for a spear, but way too late to land that one for the kill. You know, I have this bad feeling, Monty, that Ziggs is going to come back into the meta. <laughs> is, it a, is it a growing sense of dread? It is. It's the bottom like this, of your stomach. It's like this impending sense of doom. Well, Faker has to play it so he can get about 50% on Ziggs. I guess. I mean, at least SKTS doesn't exist anymore. Well, they still mostly exist. <laughs> well, still, though. Still, we don't have Easy Hoon here to play Ziggs. I feel like if Faker plays Ziggs, he'll be aggressive enough that it won't be quite the 50-minute games that we got to enjoy a couple of years ago. But I'm worried. I don't know. There's a lo there's been a lot of players hovering over Ziggs lately in Champion Select. Now Fly keeps threatening it. So. I know. And if you think about it, really, I I don't think it's the worst pick with the way certain teams decide to play right now. Okay. I mean, if you're playing a siege cop like this, you know, couldn't Ziggs fit in where Lux is right now? Uh, I mean, I think Lux is just a lot better at the moment, uh, especially since you have that long-range CC that you can follow up on with some of these other popular poke champions, right? At the moment? I suppose. See, I'm afraid that Riot's going to buff him, you know? They're going to give him, like, a little bit more damage on his Q or something, and then everybody's going to pick him. We can start a petition. Don't buff Ziggs. That's right. Just a preemptive petition. <laughs> Like, we know you're thinking about it, well, but we don't. We can go even further. Nerf six, why not? Yeah, nerf six, just in case. <laughs> I think players hovering over him in champ select is enough that uh, Ziggs needs a nerf. <laughs> you know, recently Ziggs has been appearing too much in champ select, we feel, so in order to give other champions like, uh, you know, Yorick a chance, let's nerf him. Oh, Yorick. We knew him well. <laughs> knew him. There is actually no well in that quote. Oh. Yep. Okay. I do him for ratio. It's the actual quote. I, I know It's that. a popular misquote from Hamlet. I was just trying to connect with the majority of our viewers. <laughs> oh, Wolf goes in. They really want to get this turret. Bank gets exhausted. Faker coming from the side. Takes some damage. Deals some to crush. Hippo TPs to the turret. Right before it goes down, Faker dies to edge. And now we fire coming in. Wow, that was a really good face call. Bang just spamming that right as Wolf came out of Hippo's gut right there. Nice. Now they're going to come forward, Bang. Oh, uh, boy. Bang has to flash away, was slowed by the pillar. But it looks like they'll be able to get away. However, EM Fire has really pursued this, and they're going to have to try and collapse onto the Dragon. Duke shoves another minion wave in. Duke did not come in with the TP, and this is what I'm talking about with Faker's TF. 
sometimes he just overextends yeah. on some of these ganks. And we've I've seen him play TF like this a lot previously. And he just tries, tries to get in between the turrets there. And that's going to lead to a third dragon from EM Fire. And sure, they get the mid lane turret, which is very important for them in their split push because now they can at least push up the mid lane and ward both sides of the jungle. So Faker and Duke can have a little bit more pressure on the tier two. So it can't, it could pay off here. It could pay off, but still. I suppose. It is still a bit of a sloppy game overall though. It definitely is. Yeah. You know, normally you don't say that a game has been sloppy when it has so few kills. But this one has been I mean, both of SK Telecom's kills coming off of some oh, pretty Faker big misplays. Uh-oh. Yeah, Fate's call. They're going to make a play on Gugu here. There's a knockup. They hit him with the cocoon, too, so that's an easy kill. Crush flashing away. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh. TP. Yep, Duke is here, and he's all over edge right now. That lugs with not a lot of defense. Whoa, nice flashlight binding to get Duke. That was the only thing Edge could have done to survive, and he was able to hit it. And now the question is, are they going to try and bait this Baron? Uh, Soul and Crush have a lot of poke that they could offer at the pit, but there's a lot of damage here, and of course the Callista will make this quite easy, and they're just going to go into the pit and probably see if they decide to start this or not. Cougar still has not respawned. They may just bait. Nope, they're going to try it. All right, well, two-shot barrage goes through, takes a little bit of a chunk out of some of the SKT members. They're still on that Baron for the moment. Here comes Edge. Edge has that final spark. It's still dangerous. Wolf trying to zone. Baron does get taken by SK Telecom. And now the disengage happens. They're going to go through this choke. And Edge does not catch blank. I thought maybe he'd try to go for an ult when everyone goes for the choke, but didn't end up working out. They're turning on the hippo right now. Got to be careful. Soul comes in for some big damage on the Baker. Edge gets jumped on in the back, and Duke picks uh -oh. up a kill there, and SKT has the M fire right where they want him. Double kill for Bang, and Faker with the ultimate going to catch Cougar. And Soul, the last man standing, and looks like he'll probably get away. Yeah, and that was just a great turn by SK Telecom. They realized that EM Fire have, had overextended, and so Duke had the opportunity to flank, and Duke was still at full HP. Yeah. They also managed to catch three members of EM Fire in the choke uh, with this Alistair, so they were able to get the big knockup, which allowed Bang to put a lot of the spears down. However, on that Baron again, they missed the rend one more time. They left the Baron with about 100 HP, so Bang actually really not on his objective securing game on Callista, which is very weird. We usually see him much more precise. Yeah. And SK Telecom, I mean, this is what they do. They uh, take that one team fight and they turn it into multiple objectives. And now a pretty big lead for SKT. Let's watch that again. Yeah, Hippo comes in. Look at this play right here, because Watch Wolf flashes in with the headbutt pull, and then hits the perfect knockup to turn this fight around. Meanwhile, Blank and Duke just doing work onto the back line. Great TP from Faker to help clean up Cougar right here. And then they're going to come through and try and get Soul, but instead just turn on to the mid inhibitor, take that down. They get a tier two in the bottom lane also. And with that, they have a 9,000 gold lead. Oh, Faker's gonna catch Cougar again. A lot of damage onto that trundle, gets healed by the Nidalee. And it looks like that'll be it. But Faker's kind of going into the, I'm going to use my ult every cooldown and try to gank someone, but. Yeah, he has a lot of opportunities. He doesn't have to be too careful with it right now. He does have his Zonia's Hourglass. If he wants to go in, he can buy his team a lot of time for that engage. And now they're going to sweep through the jungle, and they're going to try and use the face Wolf. call. Oh, Hello. Wolf. <laughs> Over the wall, decided he wanted to go for it anyway. That was a bit of an awkward face call. Wolf taking a bit of damage on the final spark. Oh, gets trapped there by the pillar. Makes it out. All star is a bit large. So they get the ult out of Wolf. Yeah, pops over the wall with a headbutt right there. Yeah. Try and finish that up, considering the Fate's Call came up just a little bit short. Push him off the blue buff. And they are going to secure that in their favor. Everybody back home right now, so. Probably just going to hold out here for this next Dragon Duke's TP while they wait for that to come up. It's going to be cautiously pushing into the top side. So, if SK Telecom wins the game, who would your MVP be? That's a tough one, I think. Yeah, I, I would say maybe Duke, honestly. <laughs> maybe. He's had some weird teleports this game, though, so. Yeah, I mean, everyone's kind of. Done a little bit off, but 
Duke's been very good at getting in the back lines in these recent team fights and yeah. helping SKT a lot there. So by merit of that, I would maybe give it to Duke at this point. Yeah, he also you know, has been putting on a split push pressure. We'll see how this game ends up. He is basically unstoppable now. You can yeah. see that Cougar and Hippo have really no desire to be anywhere near that turret, especially with Bang and Wolf coming up there to join them. Faker back recalling once again has grabbed his Void Staff now, so has a six item TF waiting and ready to port. That's right. Dragging up in 20 seconds. We'll see if SK Telecom decides to take that. I think it would be a pretty good idea. But I mean, with EM Fire bottled up in their base right now, the vision is great from SKT. Unless there's some sort of catastrophically bad team fight for SK Telecom, it looks pretty unlikely that EM Fire is going to be able to come back at this point. And he said the Dragon is up right now, and that'll be Elise and Callista headed down there. No real yeah. option for EM Fire to take it. We could just see SKT wait for another Baron before they really commit to closing this game out, but. Duke and Faker are there, and there's not really a, an answer to the split push from EM Fire. So Soul going to walk up, see if he can get some damage down. they not going to do a whole lot. Yeah. Just going to push into the base for the moment, get that minion wave going. And eventually they're going to whittle away at this top turret too, you know? I mean, SK Telecom too, they have an opportunity to really go hard here, because even if they lose a the team fight, they... Uh, there's no other objective really to be taken. Yeah. And look at this. Like nobody is stopping him. Faker just takes out that bottom turret. And just autos Hippo, throws a couple abilities at him, because why not? He's doing a lot of damage right now, yes, as you he can is. see. Tom Kench, not really a match. He's just going to go for the inhibitor itself right now. Very easily it. taken with that Lich Bane. Goodbye, inhibitor. Yeah, no opposition at all from the M Fire after Hippo had to go back. Yeah, great execution of this split push by SKT. Yep, finally bringing it together here in the late game. Duke's already in the base, hanging out. Gets hit by the spooky ghost, needs to be careful. I feel like they could just dive and kill that turret while Faker and Duke harass the bottom side. Well, they have to do something to do. protect their Nexus turrets right now, and it's only really the top Kench that's able to help. They're putting a lot of resources into this final inhibitor. But yep. Meanwhile, those Nexus turrets have super minions on them and Faker. He used Ghost and his Spooky Ghosts. Not at all the same thing. Double Ghost. Yeah, Double Ghost. Ghost and No, it's it's Frost Queen's claim, man. Whatever. Why it has Ghosts in it, you don't need to know. Not important. Yeah, the Frost Queen loves Ghosts, I guess. I guess so. The Empire chasing SK Telecom away, and there's the exhaust on the Duke. Can they actually catch him? Blank coming in from the side. Duke has to flash. The Empire, this is their only chance. They need to win a team fight massively now or it is over. And they don't, so I guess it's over. Well, they got their mid inhibitor back up and they didn't lose the one in top lane. They did manage to push SKT back yeah, with only but... one inhib down. But this Baron coming up in 20 seconds, the Empire is pretty much going to have to fight that if they want to have a chance of winning this game. Right. And I feel like if the Empire try to go for some sort of big team fight, we're just going to see, you know, what happened in every other big team fight where Duke finds a way to come from the flank and just destroys the back line. Yeah, he's looking for that GA more than likely to round out his build. Certainly has enough damage. Yep. And they don't even care about the big boy that's in the mid right now. Faker will be one dedicated to taking that out. Saving his actually uh, stacked deck procs for the Baron. It's pretty Makes neat sense. little thought there. Oh, Faker taking some hits. Trushot Barrage doesn't do a whole lot. And again, like we said, here comes Duke from the side, but he gets locked up, has to escape. Flash from Cougar taking him out of fight. Faker goes in the back. There's a zone. He is nice engaged by Faker, but he's going to get caught and taken out. A kill on each side right now as Duke chases down Cougar. Wow, Cougar just barely got away because of the pillar. And SKT, what are they going to do now? I feel like you can turn, but... Poke damage is too much, so I guess they can't so. really do this Baron. Yeah. They try and clear out some wards, but they're too low. And that happening. You see the laser firing over the side of the Baron, but they pretty much just have to wait for Faker to get back up at this point and try and stagger their recalls. Trundle has been sent back to base. They did lose one of their Nexus turrets as a result of that fight, so yeah. still a nice win there for SK Telecom. They'll take it. No need to overextend at this point. 
And Vicar tried that engage, but they have to be very careful because EM Fire has so much disengage. They have the Trundle Pillar, they have all that CC coming from Lux, they have dashes on Italy and Ezreal, so even with the Zonia's Hourglass and the Gold Card, he just wasn't able to lock them up for long enough in that one. Yep. Well, SKT forced back for the moment, but you'd imagine they're probably just going to go and bait the Baron again soon. Yeah, this is pretty much just going to be recurrent now, the Whoa. split pushing. And take Lux is... on a magic ride. Oh, where'd he go? There he into is. Into the brush. <laughs> right into the cocoon. <laughs> Ew. Poor Lux. I mean, you go right from being inside Tom Kench to being covered in, like, spider webs. That is a disgusting series of events for uh, Lux there. I mean, how does Tom Ketch even convince these other champions to go inside him? Like, who thinks that's a good idea? It'll be fine, don't <laughs> worry. Okay, sure, you seem like a trustworthy guy, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too concerned. Baron taken by SK Telecom. And Wolf, Fates called in. Are they going to throw him back to the fight? He doesn't have his ult. He used it right before the Fates call, actually. There we go. Now he's back in there. Crush destroyed. Lux Lager, Laser does a little bit of damage, but not much. Blank. Tries to be a hero, ends up being a zero. And EM Fire actually starting to turn this one around a little bit. Oh boy, bang, on his own in the 1v3. That's not where Callista wants to be. And that's going to be three kills uh -oh. already. Here comes Duke into the Nexus. Yep, he's going to try to go for the split push. And he's <laughs> taking out those turrets so fast. There goes Nexus turret number one. And <laughs> he he's going to be satisfied up. with that. <laughs> so I got your Nexus turret. Yep. Well, a very sloppy fight there is. Faker actually TP'd out of that fight to go kill Hippo in their own jungle once he realized things were going quite <laughs> badly for his team. This game. We've gone, we've really gone full solo queue, haven't we? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty bad. But Faker's like, ah, oh, forget this, you're all dead. I'm just gonna go get myself a kill. <laughs> Gotta take out the top catch. Bye, guys. Yep, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like SKT is at least in position to try for another dragon, setting up. The catch, Faker and Duke want to take out Cougar, and they will do it pretty quickly. Oh, Light Binding doesn't help. Cougar, nope, not quite enough. But maybe he could get away there. Yeah, those dashes from Fiora, she has them up so often. They're going to yeah. try and make a play. Soul. Soul, you are a brave, brave AD carry. But he has to use his flash in the end. Faker. Faker comes in in the 1v3. He's on a fight, turns on to Edge for the insta-kill, and Faker taken out by Crush, but Duke all over Soul. This game, guys, I don't know. Oh, Duke. Duke. Blank is trying to Blank. catch up. <laughs> I got this. I'll save you. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the inhibitors are back up now. This is one of, this is one of the... Uh, <laughs> you can see they're I so laughing. This is one of the probably lowest skill level games of League I've ever seen in Korea. <laughs> I'm not gonna it's, lie. This is uh. So you know, people. I don't know if you've noticed this over years, Monty, but people accuse us of always saying only good things about the Korean League of Legends in their games. No, this, this game is, is terrible. For the record, we have not <laughs> always said good things, and this game is, is definitely a good example of the fact that yes, you can have terrible games in in uh, champions. It's possible. As Blank finds a new and unique way to die, and the Empire's <laughs> gonna get their fourth dragon, I guess. I don't know why they would even try to do that right now. They only had three people up, and they Get knew that there were four people on the map for EM Fire. And with their inhibitors up too, they were not, definitely were not in their base trying to defend. <laughs> Everyone on EM Fire is just laughing right now. They're like, is this the team that won Worlds? No, no it's not, that's your answer. Zero coordination yeah. from SKT this game. They actually look good at the split push for a very brief window of time. Hey, man, I'm really glad we're getting to sit in on uh, SKT and the Empire scrims today. It's yeah. kind of it's it's cool nice. to see. It's cool to see a less serious game of League of Legends every <laughs> once in a while. You know, players just having fun. Dynamic Q, around. Dynamic Q has really changed the way the professional <laughs> scene works, though. It really is. This is on the live server right now. You know, we're, we're not even doing the tournament realm. This is just a Dynamic Q game that happened to pop up right when the broadcast started. <laughs> You can tell because it's not SKT's full roster. <laughs> you told me that, I would totally believe you. I know, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to the awesome display of skill that will be Longview versus Africa Freaks later today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you guys if you guys are curious about what pro scrims look like, the answer is exactly this yeah, game. Seriously. This is exactly what professional scrims look like. Yep. Yep.
it's not the most serious of affairs, you know? So when some pro says, well, we've, we've been doing really well in scrims, guys, so uh, really I think we're going to win everything, don't believe them. Yeah, do not no, believe them. It has nothing to do with how they are in tournaments. Because <laughs> this is what you're missing right here. Uh-oh. Oh, Faker. Gold card onto Hippo. Cougar and Hippo, the low damage duo. Can they do it? Nope, they can't. Oh, hi, Wolf. <laughs> Fate's calling in. Meanwhile, Duke decides he's going to go for another inhibitor. Well, you just can't stop Duke. If they just nope. keep doing this, I mean, SKT will win this game. That's yeah, all, this someday. is all they have to do is put the split push pressure on. They have literally no turrets left. That's the thing is that SK Telecom will win this game eventually, but nobody's really going to be proud of them. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I guess you did. Good job. This is a silly series. Take a bite out of Duke. Duke's like you. Those girls, Baker, Alding. What is he doing? Baker? <laughs> Baker, no. No, Baker, no. Now your team is fighting 4v5. Drew Shabraj comes through. They're going to jump all over SKT. Duke trying to get the back lines on the soul. Gets a bit low for it. And doesn't really find the angle they're looking for. I don't think SKT can break the base. Oh, big engage by Duke. Nice knock up there, or rather by Wolf. Everything is being done by Duke now. Cougar getting low blank, going for the execute. Lux Laser comes through, hits Wolf. Wolf with another three man pulverize. Oh, there's a kill. Bank got one at the end, but Crush comes in for one of his own. There's a Zodius. Duke just killed the Nexus, trying to please. get away. He's trying. His Nexus going down, guys. Triple kill for Bang. And there we go. It's finally over. Quadra kill. Duke's like, you deny me the Penta. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know if anyone really won that game. But, <laughs> but in the end, SKT did kill the Nexus. So there you go. Well, that game was interesting. Oh, wow. See it on SKT's faces <laughs> right there. They do not look very happy with the way they played. Faker tried for the extra special backdoor at the end. Man. It wasn't even a backdoor. I mean, EF Fire was literally right at their face. You could see EF Fire had a great time. Seriously. <laughs> They're like, wow. Thanks for thanks for having some fun with us, SKT. I bet Coma's real proud of his, his boys now. I want to see Coma's face when he gets in the booth. I know, right? <laughs> he doesn't come in the booth, he just like breaks through the wall and he's like big and green and his tuxedo is ripped in like three places. Jeez. He's like yeah, yeah, you're all out. You're all out. <laughs> I'm bringing in them. The Empire's a new SKT now. You, over there, blank. Why'd you miss every single cocoon? They're going to put Scout in now. Yep. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what to do, guys. We won Worlds, and now now this, really? The well, pain. The pain of Coma. He's like, I guess I should have played Bengi in that last series in Game 3. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've created this team atmosphere. <laughs> At I least can read lips. This is what he's saying. At least it was a fun game, Noah. <laughs> he facepalmed. He actually facepalmed. <laughs> you saw that. That game made Coma facepalm. And well, and we well ha it and should have. And that is how a new GIF has been born. Noah. That's right. I hope so. This is the birth of a meme. You're witnessing it. It's beautiful. Coma facepalm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Blank's like, uh, don't care. Got win. <laughs> Well, when we come back, game two of uh, SKT versus Empire, it's going to be entertaining, so don't miss it. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>